Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it is time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 495 counting down to 500. Oh my gosh, that's and it just so happens I couldn't have planned it any better and trust me, I didn't plan it. Class 500 falls on National Scrapbooking Day. <laughs> just worked out perfect, didn't it? Now you're watching this and I am either in sunny California or I'm in Columbus, Ohio. This is pre-taped so I am able to live chat with you during the premieres of my classes, but I, I'm currently right now, as I'm taping this, in sunny California. But on Saturday, I may have taken a last minute flight to Columbus, Ohio to attend the Creativation Show. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Talk about waiting to the very, very, very last minute. So if we are watching this later, if we're premiering this later in the afternoon, then I must have gone to Ohio to attend the show. And if we're watching this and premiering this and live chatting at our normal time, well, then I stayed in sunny California. What do you think I did? <laughs> now, what do I have for you today? Oh, I have a whole lot of happiness for you and two, pro well, four products that I think are going to knock your socks off. The first two are my Simply Defined Kaleidoscope Layering Stencils. I have my next two designs and I am in love with them. Now, I know they're my designs. I get that and I should be in love with them, but I really, really like them. I really do. And then the other two products I have for you are from Wow Embossing Powders. I saw this in Germany and if I hadn't gone to Germany, I wouldn't know about this product. And if I hadn't gone to Creative World in Germany, I wouldn't have been able to talk to Richard. And if I didn't talk to Richard from Wow Embossing Powders, I would not have the exclusive on the powder that I have for you today. <laughs> See, Germany always pays off. I always get something fabulous out of Germany. I'm hoping to do the same at Creativation if I actually went. Time will tell. So we're gonna be playing with stuff you already have in your crafty arsenal. I've got stays on ink and I'm gonna just stick with stays on ink today just to keep things simple, even though we're gonna be using white paper on some of this. But then I've got the wow embossing powder to show you that is amazing. And my, my new Simply Defined layering stencils, which I always do two. I do them every other month. They're value priced at $9.99 each and we always pair it with an exclusive versus stamp from Art Gone Wild and Friends. Now, Art Gone Wild and Friends is the parent company of Stampers Anonymous. You know Stampers Anonymous. If you're a Tim Holtz fanatic, well, Stampers Anonymous, that's not an actual company. That's a brand of a company. So Stampers Anonymous, Darcy's, Northwoods, Inky Antics, Versus, Art Gone Wild is all under the umbrella of Art Gone Wild and Friends. And so I always bring out an exclusive versus sentiment to go with my stencils. And I hope that you love what we have for you today. I have winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm loving that Elena's back because I've got my purple, my purple pieces of paper. Are you ready? Okay, our first two winners, our first winner is Cindy. Hello, Cindy. Cindy, you must have put in parentheses how I'm supposed to pronounce your name. Smart girl you are, Cindy. <laughs> so, Cindy Grow, if that's you, you are a winner, winner, chicken dinner of a $25 gift card. Congratulations. What are you going to spend on, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you could, you could get the stencils and you might be able to get the embossing powder for that $25. Ooh, close, really close. Woo, thought. <laughs> Cindy, congratulations if that is you. Wahoo, could you, but you are not alone. We always have two. Our second winner winner is Laura. Laura Osterland. Hello, Laura Osterland. How are you doing today? Congratulations. You are also a winner, winner chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Yay for you. I think both of you might be on live chat maybe. Maybe, who knows, but if you are on live chat, woot, 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 woot. and if you're not and you're watching this, well, we did a happy dance for you on the live chat, but now we need you to stand up, and I would, I would stand up, but I'm my own camera person, and I barely get the camera focused on me to begin with, let's be clear. <laughs> if you had, if you could see it, it was so funny. 
I think the people from Sizzix walked in. Somebody walked in. I think it was Sizzix. And they looked at it because I explained. It's literally, I have a, a two by six, about maybe 18 inches, 24 inches piece of a two by six mounted to my wall and my camera's mounted to that two by six. Just a scrap piece of wood that Michael got from Home Depot or something. And somebody walked in and said, oh my God, it really is on a two by six piece of wood. Some, some high mucky muck from somewhere said that. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I would stand up if I could, but I can't. So we will do it together. Laura and Cindy, are you ready? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. Congratulations to the both of you. I hope you enjoy your, your winnings. It is already in your online account. Go spend it on anything that makes your heart happy. Yeah, they walked in. They walked in. I can't remember who it was. And they're like, oh, oh my gosh, she's not kidding. It really is on this two by two by six that's mounted to her wall. It's like so unprofessional. It looks, it looks so, um, so homemade crafty <laughs> versus having some big company come in and set up a whole lighting system and above camera and forward camera and all of that. Nope. It's just you and me, you and me. We get it done every week together, don't we? Yes, we do. All right, so Laura and Cindy, I just wish you all the best and hope you enjoy your winning winnings. And today, today is all about Simply to find layering stencils and this new product from Wow. It is just that good. You just gotta, you gotta give credit where credit's due sometimes. It is just that good. And I think that's where I'm going to start today is with the wow. And then we'll move into the layering stencils and then we'll come back and make a whole big circle out of it. Because when you see what I do with that embossing powder and some specialty paper, oh, swoon, my heart be still. I need more men in my life because I love the one stencil that when it's done, I, I need to give it to every guy I know. I need to make a card for every single guy I know because it's, I just love it that much. All right. <laughs> so am I in, am I in Columbus, Ohio? I don't know if I am. I'm live chatting from my hotel room. <laughs> Time will tell. Good thing Spirit Airlines flies um, direct. Southwest doesn't fly direct and I'm not stopping. If I'm going, I'm going straight shot. Of course, Spirit Airline charged me for a bag, just even a carry-on bag, um, Wi-Fi. Um, I mean, it was like, it was like the, the flight was really inexpensive. As long as you like fly with nothing on you. And you don't care about about streaming or listening to music or anything. If you just if you just put money in your pocket and get on the plane, their flights are super affordable. But boy, every little thing else came. It's like, huh? Maybe it wasn't as cheap as I thought it was going to be. But it is direct if I decide to go. That makes my heart happy. All right, we're going to tilt on down. We're going to get started for today. I'm going to show you some stamp samples. I'm going to start with the wow. We're going to go to embossing folders. It's not going to make sense until we get closer to the end. And then bam, all of a sudden it is like this beautiful package with this stunning metallic bow right on top saying, open me, open me, open me. <laughs> all right, down we go. It's good to see everybody. Bye. Of course, if I do go to Creativation, you're going to want to pay um, pay attention for our live from Creativation posts. I'm going to post them on YouTube under a playlist, and I'm going to post them on Facebook and Instagram. So if I end up going, please stay tuned. You're also going to have some live from Creativations to pay attention to. Yay! <laughs> that was not as yay as I could have been. Wait a minute. <laughs> so if I go, I'm going to be doing live from Creativation. Yay! <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got to see it to be it. I got to be excited to be excited. All right. So here's sample number one. Love this stencil. And this was, well, this is taken to a, a whole new level. And here's sample number two. 
Mmm. All layering. But before we get to the layering stencils, we're going to start at the beginning. And at the beginning is with new embossing powder from WOW. I have two new embossing powders. They have a P on the top of them and a G and an S. The P stands for polished, the G and S stand for gold and silver. And this is different from their metallics. I wonder if I should put an M. I could, hello, wait a minute. This is different from their metallics, which is M and this is G and this is M and this is S. So their metallic embossing powders well, there went my pen. They are very typical to what we have in our stash every day. It's not much different than your detailed Stampendous embossing powder that they used to make or whomever makes a, a detailed embossing powder. That's what these are, and they are in a, a gold and a silver. They call theirs super fine, super fine. As if, I love that, super fine. <laughs> as opposed to detailed and I had them do exclusive for scrapbooking made simple super fine in the polished so the polished are what is new and the metallic is what you would find from most embossing companies most embossing powders whether it's hero arts or ranger or wow everybody's metallic gold and silver tend to look very much alike I'm going to play with these two. I'm going to do some samples because I want you to see what it is, what's the difference, and how they behave differently. So I've got my Versamark, and I'm just going to Versamark up I think that's pretty good. And I'm going to start with the, I'm going to start with the metallic gold. So I'm going to run a layer of metallic gold right on that. I'm just trying to give you a, a kind of a sample of what's the difference between them so that you have a visual to see. So I gave myself a nice little a nice little area so that it'll be easy for you to see. Now for those of you who have never seen embossing powder before, this isn't exactly how you use it. I'll show you later, <laughs> but for sample purposes, I wanted you to have a big swatch. So this is my metallic gold. Now, it doesn't look like much there, and if I wiped my finger across it, see if I did that, it would wipe right off because the Versamark that I used is not a glue. It is a medium for embossing powder where the medium stays wet long enough for the powder to adhere to it and that's super important you could not do this with a dye based ink you couldn't stamp down and then throw your embossing powder with a dye based ink it just wouldn't work you need to have an embossing medium that holds it but right now like i said if i just if i go like this it, it absolutely wipes away that's not what we want so embossing powder has to be heat set and it has to be heat set with a heat tool. We use the Sizzix heat tool. It works fabulously. It is hotter than a blow dryer, so you're not gonna wanna use this on your hair. At the same time, a blow dryer doesn't get quite hot enough to change this from a powder to a solid. All embossing powder is, is a fine or, well, this is super fine, so uh, ground up, plastic that when you heat it it's going to change there are different types of embossing powders like there's regular embossing powder there's fine embossing powder there's super fine embossing powder the color is all the same what's different is how finely that plastic is ground i like detailed or super fine because if i'm doing a beautiful script se uh, sentiment stamp Super fine is going to cling to each and every little bit of that detail. And when you heat it, it's not going to spread too much and make the image blurry. But 
If I want to do something big and bold, I can also do that with super fine. If I'm using a standard embossing powder, the grains are a little bit bigger and when they melt, they'll spread a little bit more. So if I want to keep the detail of something, I'm going to use a detailed or a super fine. They are going to let you keep that detail, but they're also going to let you do bold things. Unlike a standard embossing powder does not. It, it, you can do bold things, but you can't do the detailed things. So let's just heat this because this is the this is the metallic gold. And I'm going to stay in one spot. until it starts to turn. And then I'm gonna walk it on down. So I'm gonna stop there for just a moment, just so people who have never seen embossing powder before can now see what I'm talking about. How my powder has now turned into a solid. And it is dry the minute it cools down because it's just a plastic. So if I were to wipe here, I'd wipe all that off. But now, now it's turned into a solid. So I'm gonna keep on going. And I'm gonna stop there. Again, for people who have never seen embossing powder before, you can see I've got this dark area there. I even have maybe a little one right there. That means that I haven't applied enough heat to turn it from the powder into the solid. I need to go back and heat this until it turns and looks like this. Otherwise, that would wipe right off. Just like that, I'm done. I got a little on the edges I could do, but that is a metallic gold, which is standard in the industry. This is pretty much a, a color that you're going to find everywhere. Let's play with the polished gold for just a moment. So I've got my Versa mark down and you can see it's kind of wet if I can get there you go. You can see it's kind of wet there. It's not like runny wet, it's kind of sticky wet because it's going to hold that embossing powder exactly where we need it to go. And this time I'm going to grab the polished gold. This is the new embossing powder. And we are the only ones who have it in a super fine because I really wanted it. <laughs> And Richard was there and he said yes. <laughs> that makes my heart happy. So let's let gravity do its work and kind of take it on down. Let's tap it on off. Make sure I've got everywhere. So I'm a dumper, which means I just dump the whole bottle on. See, my jar is almost empty. But by the time I'm done, I end up putting it all back in because embossing powder, you use very, very little of it. Almost everything's gonna go right back into my jar. Okay, I think I'm good. I wanna brush that off, but I'll do it later. Okay, so a totally different color than what we had here. Let's heat it and see what we get.
Now this is dramatically different than here. This has a high, almost a, almost a gloss finish. This one's kind of a matte finish. This one has almost a gloss finish to it. Yes, it looks like it's been polished. If you see these, one looks dull, one is so much brighter, so much shinier. How it reflects the light is completely different. That is, when I saw that, because we're used to this. When I saw this, I flipped my socks off. I did. But wait, let's do it one more time. So I've got Versamark on my paper, take my polished gold, get it all over, tap, tap, tap. So right now I'm doing a wash, rinse, and repeat. I'm doing exactly what I just did. back away my lid now you would never typically use this much embossing powder because usually you're you're stamping with it or you're using it with tape or or usually you don't have a big line like this but this is the best way for you to see the difference So I don't know any embossing powder company that has something that that shiny that it's beautiful but we're gonna do a double emboss now that this is dry because it is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna hit it I suppose I could do well we'll do it we'll do a double emboss here so I'm adding Versamark to the top of what I've already embossed. I'm gonna throw my embossing powder on it again, doing a double emboss. Did gravity kind of do its thing? I'm going to just walk on down and anywhere they're sticky it's going to adhere tap off what I don't need now I'm double embossing put my lid on because I know me And now what's happening is the first embossing that we did is melting into the second one we're doing now. So one coat, so original embossing color, one coat of the polish, two coats of the polish. It looks like foil. It really, truly looks like you foiled your paper.
You can double emboss with any embossing powder and it changes the, the texture, it changes the coverage. You go from something that maybe has a little bit of an orange peely to something that's a little smoother. And again, there's your original all the way over. This is beautiful, but I could do a triple emboss. I'm only going to do half of it. So I'm only going to do half of it. Just so you'll be able to see the difference. Pull up my polished gold. And I could just layer it on until I'm happy. So with fine words, you're not necessarily going to do more than one coat. But my gosh, in fine words, that's going to be beautiful. But if you're doing bigger images, you may want to do a double or triple emboss. And every time you add another layer of embossing powder, the top layer is going to melt into the bottom layer, giving it more of a smooth finish. I guess it would be kind of like if you were doing, um, I guess the best way to to kind of help you understand is if you were decorating cookies. Now let's be clear, I don't decorate cookies, but my mom sure did when I was little. And you were doing a flood with your royal icing. So maybe you do a first a first layer of, of icing down, and you pipe around it and you put your first layer of icing down, and then you come back a second time with your flood to smooth it all out. You know those beautiful, perfect Christmas cookies that have that perfectly smooth icing on it? Well, they do it with a flood technique in royal icing. Well, that's kind of what we're doing here because we're adding another layer and melting it in so that it gives you that beautiful, finished, smooth look. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> So let's heat this because this is the side. And now I've added a third. And now I've got it even smoother. It's all up to you and what you want to do, but that's the polished gold. Here's your regular gold. Here's your two that are polished. Let's do it in silver so you see the silver. And I'll go super fast because now you've seen what I'm talking about. So I will do a, I'll do one with a normal silver, just with my my metallic silver, your standard everyday run-of-the-mill embossing powder, standard color. Let gravity do its job. Tap off and let's put this back into my jar. And there we go. So there's my standard. Let's heat that up and you can see what just a metallic silver looks like. And I'm just moving along as it heats up. I'm not staying in one area any too long. And 
again, just a typical silver. It looks like I need to heat more right there, but just a typical silver. Now let's go in and let's do a polished silver. Now, if I hadn't gone to Germany, I wouldn't know anything about this. And it literally, it was so beautiful. So it's even a darker color than the silver we just used. Okay, I'm going to put this all back in. Kind of tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. And in it goes. So this is now polished silver as opposed to metallic silver. It's brighter, it's happier, it's got more of a gloss finish to it. It just brightens up. This now looks very dull in comparison. It brightens. I can't tell you what they did, but what they did was amazing. You can totally see the difference between metallic, and there's nothing wrong with metallic. If you have a project and that's what it calls for, that's what you use. But the, the new polished is stunning. Let's do, let's do a double. So you can see that as well. They only do gold and silver. I really want a copper. <laughs> yeah, I need a copper like this. Not rose gold. I mean, if you're going to make a rose gold, that'd be beautiful, but then it needs to really be a rose gold. Don't call a copper rose gold just because rose gold was an in thing. Okay, so I've got my first coat. I'm going to heat this. And then I'll come back and do my flood, adding a second coat to smooth it out. And again, it's up to you whether you need to do, you want to do two or three. Okay, so now these two are exactly alike. Oh, doesn't that, this one just looks a little sad. <laughs> these two are exactly alike. Let's add one more coat to this one and see what we get. And this is just my Versamark that we're using. So because this is new, at this point, we're only doing it as a bundle, the gold and the silver. At some point, we'll be able to offer it open stock, just the gold and just the silver. But they were only able to manufacture so much for me in time for this class. And this is by 
Wow. That's the name of the company. Wow. They're out of the UK. Very nice. Holly, Holly, you've been a, you've been just wonderful. And Kelly here in the US, bless your pea picking heart too. You guys have been amazing. So, now I have original silver, I have polished silver one coat, and polished silver in two. And it just smooths it out, and I could go one more, oh, that, that, it's beautiful. I hope you like it. I went crazy for it. I thought these are just the colors and the shine to them. Again, this one now feels a little dull. These are very happy. It's a totally different look. It's almost got like a mirror look to it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so, well, I guess, I'm, so this is where we started. Now I'm gonna switch gears and I'm gonna pull out my stencils and we're gonna play with my stencils for a little bit. I'm going to be working with Stazon today. So Stazon is a permanent ink, permanent, not pigment. This is an alcohol-based product, and I'm using it right now. It, you can absolutely use your stays in place without question. And yes, we'll be getting stays in place back in, but stays in place comes in from Australia. So stays in place has a shimmer to it. Stays on is a flat color. I'm gonna be using this on paper, on white paper, as opposed to dye-based inks. You can use stays on on just regular paper but stays on really is meant to go on things that are non-porous, hence the name stays on. Same with Couture Creations, stays in place. That means when you put it on glass or plastic or metal or vellum or it, it adheres, it dries. Think of stays on or stays in place, kind of like a Bic or Sharpie marker or the alcohol markers you use to color because it is made up of the same type of ink. So. For simplicity purposes today, I'm going to be using this even on porous, white, simply defined paper because you can use stays in place or stays on on regular paper. The difference is if you have a dye-based ink, dye-based inks will never adhere to glass or plastic or metal or vellum. It'll, you'll just wipe it. It'll stay forever wet. It will never dry. Stays on will dry not only on paper, but on all of those other elements too. So, and today just for ease, I'm just gonna play with these. All right, so let's pull over, um, let's pull over my, my first one. I guess I'll do this one first. I just don't know which one to do first and which one to not do first. Um, this one is just called Cut Circles and it's three stencils to make up a whole image. And this is very much about masking as it is about stenciling. When all three images are together, you actually can't put your hand or your finger through anything. That's because the, the next layer down is masking off the next layer down so that you are able to add all your colors without anything blending or bleeding into each other. So you've got a stencil here, but it's also acting as a mask for the next stencil and you've got a stencil here and then you've got a mask to go with. So let's stencil one and I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna use, like I said, white paper. I'm gonna use my stays on because I've got it. I'm gonna take my stays on and I'm gonna go ahead and, actually I've got it somewhere here. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can, let's find, up oh, here we go. just to make it a little easier for me to see. They've been tabbed with an arrow and a letter. And I will show them to you.
So each stencil has been tabbed with a letter uh, and an arrow. Arrow pointing which direction it should go and the letter saying which is the top. Here's A and it's pointing out. Here is B and it's pointing out. Here is C and it's pointing out. Now I want you to know that because these are masking and stenciling at the same time, you don't have to follow the ABC. You really don't. If you want to do C, A, B, you can. It will be okay because they're not going to affect uh, each other. The, the, stair, the, the stencils are layered so that you can do one on top of the other without interfering with the colors that are below. So if for some reason you go out of order, that's fine. That's not a problem. Where you need to be sure you don't go out of order is on those on those arrows. So I've got arrows on all three of these pointing that way. But if I turned this one, now I don't have an arrow on this tab like I do here. That means this stencil is not going to line up correctly. It won't. It can't. It's in the wrong order. You need those arrows every time to be in the same position. You could have your arrows down there if you wanted. Fine, not a problem. You could flip it over and do it this way and all your arrows are that way. However you get it done, it's those arrows are the most important thing because they are what's going to keep your stencils in the correct orientation. If I mix them up, that's not a problem at all. If I mix them up, great, no worries. But if I start mixing up the orientation, then I'm going to then I'm going to have problems. You only do it once. You do that once and you'll remember. <laughs> and thankfully, we're, it's white paper that we're working on. So I'm going to take my stencil A, make sure my arrow is pointing out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tape it on down. Top. bottom, side, and side. I give you tabs all the way around so you have plenty of place to tape your stencil down as opposed to a very fine little border. I leave two tabs open so that I can make registration part uh, marks. You'll see, I'll show you. I remember I always start going and then I forget to do my registration marks so what color do we want this how about we do maybe a blue how about a blue so I'm using my stays on which isn't typical on paper but I'm good and I'm just gonna go in here And do the whole thing. I might leave some highs and some lows and not have it all exactly the same blue. And there's stencil number one. It does not look like much. I understand. Granted, I agree with you. Oh, did I do my red? Yeah, I did. So I'm going to add a little bit more here just so I have some really good registration marks. And now I can pull it off. And I know it doesn't look like much. I left a little bit of my stencil, my, my tape there, but that's okay. Now this is alcohol ink. 
So if you take a baby wipe to try and wipe the ink off, like we would with a dye-based ink, if this was a dye-based ink, it would wipe right off. But this is an alcohol-based ink. So if you want to clean your stencil, easy peasy mac and cheesy, you grab your hand sanitizer or your alcohol and spritz, spritz, spritz. And you can clean your stencil off. Will all the blue come off? No, I don't know that it will. But an, un, an unstained stencil is an unloved stencil. Do not send it to the land of misfit stencils. Use them. Get them out. Play with them. Sit there and make oodles and oodles of backgrounds one day, and then you just never know when you're going to go grab them and use them. But you had a great time making the backgrounds. All right, so I'm going to put this one to the side, and I'm going to move to my stencil number two. So I've got my B, it says B on my stencil with the arrow, and I remember my arrow. Oh, Stacy. Yes, my arrow here. <laughs> Sometimes I lift up this and I turn it, I flip it around to show you. So Yep, see, I bet I did. I bet I flipped this up and turned it around to show you. Yep. Okay, so I showed you this and I put it down. When I put it down, I put it this way. When I lay my B, which should line up over here because that's where my A was, I shouldn't see any, there should be no blue poking through at all, none. That tells me that I've lined it up improperly. Ah. Oh. I have to flip it. There, see, I'm working like this, but I showed you like that and then I put it down like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the stencils act as a mask as much as they do a stencil. And this stencil is masking off everything I just did in the blue. I don't wanna see any of that blue winking at me, not even a little hint of a peep of a wink. I want it all covered up. And those registration marks on the sides, remember I did here and I did here. All I have to do is line my tabs up so they fit right back in and I'm instantly registered. I don't want it like that. See how it's not the same? And I can see blue poking through and I don't want it like that because again, it's not lined up. I shouldn't see any of that white. It should fill up that space. And the minute I've done that, I know that I have registered properly and I am good to go. So I need to tape down. One. three, four. Now what color should we use? How about we use the orange? Again, I'm using stays on. You could use any dye based ink you want to use. I'm going to come over and do the whole thing. And just get some orange in every place that I see white paper poking through. Okay, I think that looks good. So let's take it off. Ah, we 
see a pattern coming through. And again, if I wanna clean this, I'm gonna clean it with my baby wipe or my towel and some hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer or alcohol. For now, I'm gonna put these off to the side because I may end up using them later. And let's take my last one. Now again, how did I orientate this? So to me, I think, I nope, that's not gonna work. So I probably need to flip it my way and then flip it this way. And it should, the last stencil should now mask off all the orange and all the blue. I shouldn't be able to see a, a hint of orange or blue coming through that those openings at all. If I can see that, then I'm not lined up. And I can tell I'm not lined up because look at it, it doesn't match my registration marks. So let's line it on up. These are so simple to use. If you have ever been afraid of stencils, please don't be afraid of these. They're easy peasy and they make you look like you are a rock star. Layering stencils have really come on the market and some manufacturers do five, six, seven stencils in a set. You know, I try to keep it, I, I, may, I may go to four at some point, but so far three has really done what I wanted them to do. And they're in a full A2 size and they're just to make a simple or well, they don't look simple once you're done, that's for sure. How about we use the green? To do a stunning background, this is a great background. Depending on what colors you use, it's for a guy, you can do it for a little boy, you can do it for a little girl. Pinks and purples and yellows. Come in here and anywhere I see an opening, I know it's going to need my green. Yeah. So where did this inspiration come from? A rug. <laughs> I'm looking at a rug and it wasn't quite like this, but it was, it was close for sure. And I looked at that and I said, man, I think that would make a great stencil. I can't remember if where I was at it, home goods or I don't know, but I saw a rug and I'm like, holy smokes artichokes. I love this. So we tweaked it just a little bit figured out how to do the layers so it would have the layering element and went for it. All right, let's pull it up and see what I've got. I could either leave it with the white because we give you that white border you can leave it with the white border or you can cut the white border off it's up to you But here is stencil number one. Just inked. And you can orientate it any way you want. Love the colors. This would make a great little little guy card, maybe Maybe a happy birthday with a little car on it or something. Love the colors. So this is just using ink on white paper. Put that one over there. 
and then let's pull out stencil number two. Stencil number two is a little bit different. Gosh, I don't know if I have any posting. Oh, wait, 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 I have a posting note. Hold on, I might need a posting note. Okay, stencil number two is a little different. It is a clock and there are three stencils to it, but all three stencils don't layer. You're like, wait a minute, you just said they all layer. I know, but not this one. <laughs> There is definitely a stencil A, a stencil B, and a stencil C. So, I wanted to give you two options on your pocket watch. Here, stencil C is your is your full it does your pocket watch to tell you it's a pocket watch. Or you have two faces that you can do just as clock faces. And I added the hands separately so you could make it whatever time you want on either of the stencils. But you're not going to layer stencil one and then stencil two and then stencil three. You're going to layer stencil one and stencil three to do this, or you're going to layer stencil two and stencil three to do this. Stencil one and stencil two are not two peas in a pod and they do not work together. They are meant to work with stencil three, giving you different options. So you could just do this on something. You could do just this on something. You could do here on something. You could do here on something. Or you could just do this and put something else in the center that you have. Maybe an image, a picture, some rice paper, whatever you want to do. Let's, let's do this. Let's do a couple of them so you can see the difference. So stencil A also has Happy Father's Day on top. I had the space, I had to fill it with something. So if you don't want it to say Happy Father's Day, you can either just put a, a post-it note over it so you mask it off, totally up to you. But let's start with this one. And let's bring over my piece of paper. And let's bring over my... washi tape and let's tape it on down. So one. Now you could use the Happy Father's Day without using the stencil, the clock stencil. You would just mask this off so you can use Happy Father's Day on something else. I had the space, I had to do something with it. I'm not one to just leave empty space when we're paying for the, all of that, all of that uh, square footage. And I think that's okay. All right, so I've got my first stencil down and, oh, what color do I wanna make it? Um, spice chai maybe? Mm, that's a little dark. Clear it. Mm, that's pretty. Okay, so I'm going to mask off my Father's Day so that I don't accidentally stencil it. And I'm gonna come in here, and again, I'm using stays on. You can use whatever inks make your heart happy. I'm just using this because I'm gonna be using this a little bit later on, and I just wanted to stick with one ink today.
and I'm just adding my color in. And I'm using a foam dauber versus a brush. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to come back so I could use that just as is and the numbers are always going to be the color of the paper that you are starting with I'm going to come back and I'm going to grab my stencil number three I didn't do a great job of doing my registration marks. I only did the one down here, so I didn't do the best of jobs to do that. And let's tape that down. I've got it lined up. I just feel it needs to come this way just a little bit. Well, I'm going to go for it. It's only white paper. And what color should we do that? I want to do something something lighter. Um, maybe if I use the ganache and I try to go really light with the color. Oh, that's super dark, not ganache. We'll go back to spiced chai. And let me try and keep it light. Trying to keep my color a little bit light. And I'm just going around. There, now I did my, <laughs> now I did my registration mark. So I think that's pretty good. And now when I pull it off, there I am. And I can go in and I can certainly add my, my um, hands if I want to. I left a registration, so we have that big dot right there. That's going to register right with the big dot there. And I can make it any time that I want. I do need to use some post-it notes to cover up to make sure that I don't accidentally stencil 
where I don't want there to be ink. I'm just going to cover that whole thing up. And then let's grab our black. I've got my first hand there and my second hand I don't know line it up with the registration marks which is that dot right in the center and again cover up everything except for the hand that you're going to stencil That way you don't accidentally get that black ink where you don't necessarily want it. And that's gonna be the case no matter what ink you use. You're gonna to have to mask to use the hands. I didn't want to build the hands into the stencil because what if you wanted it for a specific time? Maybe you're doing a save the date or something like that and you want to use these and you want to put the time. I, I, I just, maybe you're doing a, a, a card for a little one and, and you it's their first birthday and you do the time that they were born. I wanted to give you the option to do whatever time made sense to you that was important to you. So I did the hands separately. So now we've got two hands and I gave you a second. Your little tick, 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 tick. Makes me think of 60 minutes, tick, 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 tick. So I'm gonna cover up everything except for that second hand or, is that what they call it? Yeah, because it's the seconds, right? And let's get some black. And everything lines up for you. There's no guesswork about any of this. Nobody needs to know that there's no guesswork. You tell them that you slaved for hours to get this done. I will not tell on you. And then I cut it out. Now if I had done this on a different color paper, instead of white, my numbers would be whatever color paper I started with. And we have this one. So the edges of your pocket watch go slightly off. One done. But there's two faces for this. Options are important. So let's bring over number two here. And let's start with this one first. So, so far we've done this one and here. Totally different look, totally different watch face. So B, I can't put my A, remember my A 
was where'd my A go? My A was here. My A was this one, but my A and my B do not work together. It's an AC or a BC. You choose your choice. So let's tape my B on down. You could even start with the C. <laughs> if you wanted, you could even absolutely start with the C and then put your face in secondary because they act as a mask and a stencil. You may use those clock hands on something else you have that doesn't have clock hands. So I've got it stenciled down. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mask off my clock hands because I don't want to accidentally stencil them. So one, two. And what color do we want to do on this one? How about, how about the green? Uh, maybe a, let's see if we can keep the emerald green, kind of a light emerald green. Not sure if we'll get there, but we'll try. Yeah, maybe we'll make it a dark emerald green. So this is the reverse. On the last stencil, your numbers became, um, stayed white, and on this stencil, your numbers are going to be the color. So I did it two ways so that you have um, two different options, a reverse on the numbers. So you can see my numbers are what's now being colored. Where on the last stencil, the numbers were masked and stayed white. So the main portion of this clock is going to be white. If I had used a different colored paper, the main portion of this clock would be whatever color paper that was. All right, I think that's good. Close enough, it's kind of a distressed look. Let's peel it off and see what we got. Too big of a piece of tape. Come on. There we go. So I've kind of got a distressed look going on. And again, I didn't do my, y'all, <laughs> I didn't do my registration. You think I can line it kind of back up? I'm going to say that that's close. All right, there. Now at least I've got something. There. 
So where these numbers were, whoa, these numbers were white. Now these numbers are colored and the main face of the clock is white. Main face of the clock is colored and the numbers are white. Again, depending on what color paper you use underneath, it's all up to you. So now we can come in and line up my registration marks. <laughs> And I think that was a ganache that I used. Oh no. Oh, ganache is dark. And all I'm doing is the outside of the clock. And that looks pretty good. And now we can put our hands Maybe I do those in the ganache too. So I line up where I want my first hand and I line it with that dot that's in the middle. That dot that's in the middle is your registration mark. Line up the dot to dot. And then posty note around so you don't accidentally get that dark ganache on your pretty lovely green that you just did. Posty note, posty note, posty note, and posty note. And I'm just going to use the same, I'm just going to go with the ganache. Okay, done. Then I'm gonna get the next hand and decide where I want that to be. About right there. Mask. Mask, mask, and mask. Ooh, done. Pull it off, pull it up. Now I've got my hands where I want them to be. Do we want the second? We can have it. Just line up that dot. And then we come back and mask and mask. Okay, and let's get that second hand done. Or yes, yeah, so it is a second hand, right? Is the 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 tick 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 hand? And I just use the same uh, the same 
masks that I'm using my post-it notes. I'm just using them over and over again. Okay. Now the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab Oh, I'm going to grab this one. Come on. I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to put Happy Father's Day up here. And I'm going to take and mask off everything underneath. So I want to be sure to only get my Happy Father's Day and none of this. Because this is on the stencil we did over here. And the hands were on the stencil that we did here. And then I think I'm going to bring that emerald green on back. Now keep in mind, teaching takes longer than actual doing. If this was you at home, this wouldn't take much more than maybe... 10 15 minutes at the most assuming you're kind of a newbie if you are experienced in stenciling you're going to get through this pretty darn quick okay I made sure to not make a mess, pull that off, and now I've got my Happy Father's Day at the top. So I can come in, let's move some of these back. I can come in and trim it out. Now, I didn't have to put my Happy Father's Day there. I could have done my Happy Father's Day on another piece of paper and matted it and mounted it someplace else on my card. So you have a couple different options with our second stencil. I don't know which one you like better, but you don't have to choose, you get them both. Do you need the Happy Father's Day? Do you want the Happy Father's Day on something entirely different? Maybe you wanna just cut that off and use it for some, something else. Mat it and put it somewhere else on the card. Mat it and put it on another card in its entirety. But it's all about having options and you've got both to work with. Okay, so those are the stencils with just inks. Easy, kind of masculine, but it doesn't have to be depending on how you color them. I'll show you that in the samples. I'm gonna get rid of these because we'll start again. And now we're gonna kind of come full circle. We're gonna come back to, we're gonna come back to our embossing powders. All right, so let's pull, let's use my first stencil. And I'm gonna use white paper. And I've got my stencil A. Stencil B. We even gave you a little arrow on the top as well, just to be, I haven't been using it, but 
you could. We got a stencil B, and I've got a stencil C. Okay. So I'm going to start with my stencil A, and I'm going to do black. So let's tape it on down. And remind me, shorter pieces of tape are better. <laughs> they peel up easier. So one, two. We're now going to take it a step further than just ink. We're going to combine ink with embossing. OK, so I've got my four down, I'm going to use my stays on ink and I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to stencil this all black. All black. Get my registration lines really good now that they're out of the lines. <laughs> Overcompensating, overcompensating. <laughs> that would be the story of my life. <laughs> my dad had high expectations. <laughs> story of my life, overcompensating. <laughs> How many of you can say the same thing? <laughs> Ah, all right, so I think I'm good. I've got a pretty good black in there. I want it nice and stark and black. Okay. Hmm. Thought process. And because I can, <laughs> sometimes it's good to be me. This one, same stencil. I just grabbed another one because, well, sometimes it's good to be me. I have these are mine, so I have them. Like more than one available. <laughs> okay, so there's my A. Yep. And what if we come in and we tape it down? And this time. Small pieces, Stacy. We'll do side by sides. I like side by sides. I like being able to have comparisons, apples to apples, so that you can see the difference. And what color do you guys like? I agree. Let's try the midnight blue. Might be too midnighty, but let's give it a whirl. Oh, it is very midnighty. If I come back and I add a little bit of this one to tone it down just a little bit. So now I've got Midnight and Hawaiian going on in here. And I'm just blending them to kind of tone it down so it's not as dark as that Midnight Blue. But I put a little Midnight Blue over everything just so it had that same tone kind of going on everywhere. So now I've got one in black and one in blue. So 
So one in black, one in blue. Did I do my registrations? Kinda. All right, let's peel it off. And remember, to clean these, I need to use my hand sanitizer because it's alcohol ink. Ooh, is that, love that. It doesn't look like much now, but wait. So I'm gonna set this one over here for just a minute. And remember, I turned it this way. So now I'm gonna come into B. Hello, B. And B should line up so that I don't see any of that black peeking through. If I see any of that black peeking through, I know that I'm not lined up properly or my orientation is not correct. One. Two, three, and four. This time, I'm gonna come in with my Versamark. Now, I can choose to do Versamark in the mini pad, or I can choose to do Versamark in a bigger pad and spounce it. It's up to you however you're most comfortable. If you're more comfortable taking the mini pad, and going in, by all means. If you're more comfortable kind of coming in this way or putting Versamark right onto your spouncer and going in this way, it's entirely up to you. You have options. You can even take your big pad if you really want to and come in like this. It's however you are most comfortable getting it down. You need to make sure that all your white space has Versamark on it. All the white space that's poking out saying, do something to me, do something, color me, emboss me, ink me, foil me, glitter me. All these spaces need to have Versamark on it. And because the Versamark is a foam sponge pad, you can get it down in there to get into the space. If it was a felt pad, this would be a little more difficult. All right, I'm sure I've got enough. Let's peel it off. And I'm not gonna clean this because I'm going to use this again. And I can see where my Versamark is. Can you see that the wetness, the where the ink hasn't yet dried yet and it's got that glossy, glossy image coming back at you like a watermark? Now, hmm, color, let's go gold, polished gold, because it's beautiful. I'm gonna take my, oh, it's raining again here. I'm gonna take my polished gold And everywhere there's Versamark, I need to make sure that I've hit my, my area with my embossing powder. Okay, let's put some of this away. And then I can look and see if I need more anywhere. I just add a little more there and a little more there and kind of move it around, make sure that it's got good coverage. I think that's good. And then I'm going to heat it. So let's put this back.
cover up. Hello, lid, where'd you go? Right there. And let's grab my heat tool and let's zap this and turn it. So I've almost got them all heat. And there I am. Let's do the next layer. So I'm going to layer C right on top, line it up. Make sure my registration points are good. And tape it on down. And this time, I'm going to come back. I feel like that's a little off. That's better. I'm going to come back with my silver. So, Versamark. I think I've hit everywhere. Peel it up. And I can see the where the wet is from that Versa mark. Now let's take my silver in my polished. P, right? Yep. Polish. Walk it on down and where that Versamark is, my silver is clinging to. All right, let's put this all away. Lid and heat. Can you see the difference between the silver there, the silver that hasn't been heated yet, 
Look at the difference. This is still powder up here. This is beautiful. Okay, let's cut away all the noise. All of this around there, that's distracting you. Now, some of you are like, oh no, I like that part. <laughs> and I'm gonna cut it straight. I'm gonna cut straight to the... So, I could have done this on any colored paper as opposed to white. Now, what I want you to see here What's important to notice is that my stays on black kept some of that gold. Can you see that the gold is on my stays on black? Now it's set, There's, it's not gonna move. Giving it kind of, it kind of diffuses that black just a little bit. And that's because I did my black first. But remember, I said these stencils can be done any, any order you want as long as the orientation is correct. So if you are not in love with the gold on your black, just change the orientation. And I will come back to the blue. I will. But let's do, let's do this one, only I'm going to change the orientation. So I've got here, got this one right here. My orientation is there. I'm going to put it down. I didn't clean it. It's going to be what it's going to be. This has Versamark all over it. And let's grab one more little piece of tape. Make sure I've got that orientation right. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of ink of something, a little bit of something, just to get my orientation lines, because Versamark is very hard to see. It's clear. So if I do that, and I do that, at least I know when I go to line up my next one where to go. Okay, let's try that. And I'm going to come back in with my Versamark. And I'm going to ink the whole thing. How do you clean Versamark? It is water soluble. You don't need to add any hand sanitizer to the top of this. Just a baby wipe, mild dishwashing detergent. Okay, I'm going to guess that I've got enough and that I hit every place. Take off my stencil. See, those smaller tabs are better. <laughs> I don't want to lose it because in case I come back to it, I'm going to grab the other stencil. Same thing, Versamark. I can line up. No, I'm going to, don't do that. I'm going to, I'm going to, Hello, I'm gonna use my embossing powder before I do that. Oh my goodness, that would have been a mess, 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 mess. So let's use the gold on this one maybe. Okay. 
and it's going to cling to very few places because there's very few places in that stencil. Oh, Stacy. Down, down, down. Let's put a little here, a little there, just where I see that it needs it. And tap. Just a light tap. All right, let's put all this away and we're gonna heat that up, which should go pretty quick because there's not much there. So now I'm doing it in a reverse order. Which means that when I get to my black, that black is going to be as black as that stays on ink is. Now again, you don't have to use stays on. I'm just using stays on because we're going one place after this. Okay, it looks like I... Looks like I pretty much got it all. Look at that, that's beautiful. Okay, now let's pull the next one down. And let's line it up. Oh, you can see it's got stays on all over it. <laughs> or not stays on, Versamark. Holy smokes, artichokes. And let's line it up. I'm going to say that's pretty good. I don't see anything winking at me. That's the important part. Nothing. I shouldn't see any of that gold coming through. Not anywhere. Put my lid on. Versamark. So for me, the smaller one is easier for this. If I was going to use a spouncer, I would put Versamark refill directly onto that spouncer as opposed to trying to pull it from the pad. That's a little more difficult. All right, you think we're good? I'm going to go for it. Put this one up there just in case. Well, I don't want to set it on top of that then. Let's get the silver, polished silver. And now anywhere that Versamark is again, my polished silver is going to hold to it. Okay, that looks pretty good. I know it doesn't look like much. Kind of looks like um kind of looks like Small World. <laughs> like I'm building the the front of Small World at Disneyland. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Let's go ahead and heat and then I'm going to bring my number 1, my A stencil back. Remember, I started with my number 3 stencil.
Okay, now let's bring my A stencil back, line it up. That is not the right way. Line it up. How did I know it was not the right way? I could see stuff coming through. I shouldn't be able to see any of that. I've got my registration marks, easy peasy. Grab my black stays on. My black dauber. Anybody seen it? Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. I heard you. And go in and ink as dark as I want or as light as I want. I could make some of it kind of a gray and some of it really black. all depending upon how much ink I choose to use. The difference by putting the ink on last is it keeps that ink without having any, oh did I hit that? I missed that one. Can you see I missed that one? I can totally see I missed that one. Any more dark spots? No, I think that's good. So now my ink is completely black. There's no gold mixed in it at all. And it's really up to you which one you like better. Let me cut out the cut out the noise. And I'm using white paper. You may choose to use a different colored paper so that your background is a totally different color. It will still work because you're using embossing powder. And that embossing powder is going to cover up whatever color paper you're using and leave it as the background. Okay. So here I did my ink first and then my embossing powder and because stays on is a little tacky sticky, it left some of the embossing powder behind, which kind of added a gold mist to my black. Here, I changed the orientation and I did my embossing first and my black last, keeping that black sharp, sharp, sharp. But my blue has been sitting here for a while. Let's see what happens with my blue. Bring my stencil on back. Let's see if that's the right orientation. Oh, it is, yay for me. So my blue's been there for a little bit, right? Kind of just hanging out. That feels off, that looks off too. Okay. Versa mark. Uh, 
off. Let's see what happens if it sticks. Let's take our silver. So it's going to stick to my Versamark, but will it stick to my blue ink? Because that blue ink's been sitting there a while. So has it had time to fully dry? In some places, yes, and in some places, no. Yeah, for the most part, yes, good. And then this way, Woo! Okay, I think that's good. I'm starting to get Versamark on the back side of my stencil because I've used it so many times without cleaning it. Yep, see right there. All right, I'm gonna let it be. I'm gonna go ahead and put this away and heat and do the gold. And then we have apples to apples to apples. And then we're going to move on. You're like, move on, move on to what? Oh, wait. <laughs> Remind me to make sure I don't have any dark spots. See any dark spots? See, and the blue doesn't have as much silver on it because that blue has had time to dry. If you were using a dye-based ink, which is what you would typically be using, then you don't have to wait. The dye-based ink absorbs into that paper super fast and doesn't stay a little tacky like stays on does. But I wanted you to see what happens if you use stays on and you don't let it dry. If you don't want it to have that look, just change the orientation. There we go, change the orientation. <laughs> I should take my own advice. Ooh, there's just so much, so much Versamark on here, but we're just gonna go for it. It's only white paper. I could probably almost rub it and take what's on the stencil to put in there. <laughs> it's loaded. All right, I'm gonna go for it. And then we've gotta move on. And I'll do my gold. Gold, gold, gold. Where I have the Versa mark, the gold is clinging, but it's not clinging to the silver because the silver has already been heat set. I missed a whole space right there. Look at that, I missed a whole space. All right, I'll come back and fix it. Let's get this done.
Okay. So I'm pretty good, but I missed a whole corner right there. I missed a whole corner. <laughs> I guess it's my choice what color I want that corner to be. Uh, orientation, nope, this went that way. So is it this one? Yep. I missed that whole corner. We're gonna make it silver. I'm just gonna go back in and fix it. If I get a little Versamark on my other, it's fine because I'm using silver. And silver is what was on there. Let's fix it. I missed that whole corner. But that's how easy layering stencils are. They're forgiving. I missed a corner. I'm going to go back. I'm going to fix it. I don't have to start all over again. Bam. Done. Don't throw it away. Fix. And then let's trim it on out. So the colors you use, the embossing powders you use, can have a dramatic change, impact on, on what the finished product actually looks like. And so far I've only been on white paper, but we're going to change that up. We're going to change it up to something else. So we started here, then we went there, then we went there, then we went there. It's so pretty and can be anything you want it to be, just depending on the colors that you use. But let's change it up a little bit. And this time I will try and do, I'll do one in the, at least one in the clock. Let's play with paper that, hmm, needs the stays on. This is opulent paper by Sizzix. I've got the metals, I've got their holographic that's part of the mystical. This is part of the silver collection. The mirror is part of the silver collection. I've got rose gold in here. I've got regular gold in here. I mean, I've just got a little bit of everything. But this paper requires you to use stays on. Absolutely requires you to use stays on. It has a coating over the top that makes it, boy, everything feels like embossing powder. <laughs> that makes it uh, impossible for a dye-based ink to go in and absorb. Makes it impossible for a dye-based ink to go in and absorb. What if I do the, what if I do, well, I did this one in blue. So what if I bring the blue back? Make sure I've got my orientation right. There's my A, put it down. This is very happy paper, almost too happy. It's almost like Boy, this is kind of hard to use because it's got a lot of holographic there going on. Wow. But what if we toned it down just a bit? What if we toned it down just a bit? And what if I use my black? My black? Hmm. No, my blue. I've got it as blue. Let's leave it as blue. So if I were to use a dye-based ink on this paper, it would no-go. 
It would wipe off. It would never, 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 never dry. So right now I'm using Blue Hawaii, but I think I might even come back and add some of that Midnight. And I'm just spouncing. Let's try some of the Midnight too and see if that darkens it up a little bit. I'm not sure what we're gonna have until we have it. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, that midnight's definitely dark. So I'm just bouncing it on some of my holographic paper that comes in that mystical pack. I'm trying to kind of subdue <laughs> a little bit of that holographic. All right, let's peel it off. Ooh, that's pretty. So it doesn't look like much now, but wait. Okay, love this. Put that over there for now. We might come back to that. And then let's move to our next, which is B. And did I change my orientation or did I keep it the same? I'm gonna give it just a second to dry. Cause stays on does take just a second to dry. Am I right? I am, good. Line it up. Tape it down. And what color do we wanna use now? How about a, that deep red? A little bit on the top. A little bit on the bottom. I don't even know if I need to do side to side. Let's, let's chance it and see what we get. Oh, on this paper, this color is magic. and you have to use stays on. I'm on a non-porous paper. Almost all the opulent paper is non-porous. It's got a coating on it. So you want to just grab the right tool for the right project. If you're using opulent paper and you want to stamp on it, grab a permanent ink, not a pigment ink, a permanent ink. All right, I'm gonna give it a whirl and see what happens. <laughs> My gosh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's looking good. And then what's our last color that we want? Oh, I don't know, what do we want for the last color? Um. Do we want to do black? Do we want to do orange? Do we want to do green? How about we just do black? Black? Black. Okay, do I have my orientation right? Yes, I do. Line it up, tape it down. but we're not done after this one. No, no, no. Okay. So black.
So no embossing powder at all on this one. Just stays on. Spounce, spounce, spounce. Spounce, spounce, spounce. I could have gone back and done this one in the red or the blue and not has many colors. It still would have looked good. Be good. Spounce, spounce, spounce. Now let's cut away the noise. So on specialty paper, stays on, required. I think I'll do one more of these and I'll finish with the clock. What do you think? Is it too much for you? <laughs> it could be. I can understand that. It could be too much. I can relate, but not really. I think it's amazing. I think it's fabulous. I think people will wonder, how the heck did you do that? Yay! Um, all of these different options. But still one more to go. Yay. All right. So I'm going to finish. I think I'll do this last one here with the dots and then I'll finish with the clock. And I'm going to pull over. I'm going to pull over. I'm going to pull over this piece. Again, opulent paper. Hmm. And I'm going to do, that's C. I can do C as my last one. I'm going to start with new ones because my other ones have so much versa mark on them. So I'm going to do A here. And I've got my A. I can see it. I can see my A. So I'm going to tape my A down. And I'm going to go all four and then mark my registration marks because I'm going to start with Versamark. just so I have my registration marks. And I'm gonna start with Versamark. Let's hope I don't miss one this time. Okay, I think that's pretty good. 
And how about I do Hmm, what color do I want? Uh, silver. Hold that one to the side. How about I do silver? So let's bring my polished silver out. And now I'm on opulent paper. This is from the rose gold. It's kind of hard to see. I definitely got some lines in it when I pulled my stencil up. Ooh. There we go. Tap it off. Tap it off. Doesn't look like much. It never does until it really does. You add that last stencil and then all of a sudden everything comes, everything comes together. Any place I can see where I've missed a little bit. All right, I'm gonna put all this away, carefully. <laughs> Very carefully. There we go. And into my container you go. I'm gonna tap that down. Boy, I have seriously used that piece of black paper. All right, let's heat set this. Heat set. turning all my embossing powder from a powder to a plastic. Okay. So I don't think it looks like much yet, but let's do my second stencil which is uh, not C, should be B, stencil B, where's B? B, this should be my second one. I've got my registration marks. None of my silver is coming through at all. Tape it down. such a big one. And Versa Mark. So specialty paper, can you emboss an ink on specialty paper? Yes, you just have to use the right tools to do it. 
The embossing, easy peasy. The inking, not so much. Permanent based ink. Archival. Stays in place. Stays on. And let's get the gold. Every place that Versa mark has hit, my gold is going to stick. If I missed a spot, give a little tap. If I can't tell if I missed a spot, <laughs> put a little bit more just to be sure. I think that looks good. Let's put my gold away. Let's heat. Lid. And let's bring that embossing powder to life. It's turning from that yucky brown to a fabulous gold, a polished gold. Is this one A or is this one C? This one's A. Yep, nope, A. Can't use A. What about this one? Is this one A or is this one C? Oh, this one's A. Maybe I'll do it in blue. Oh, I wanted green. Is this one A or is this one C? C. No, I need an A. Well, I'm going to do this in green. Even though it's blue, we're just going to pretend. I'm going to do it in green. Oh, I missed one. Look at that. So it's dry. I'm good to go. Let's line up. No, I need C, right? C. Yes, I need C. And I'm going to do C in green. And line it up and tape it on down. I shouldn't be able to see any of the gold or any of the silver. Let's grab our green. Let's see what it looks like in green. Green stays on. If I don't like it, I can come back and do black. <laughs> I can go darker. All 
right. So I think we're good to go. I like the green. Let's cut it out. And then I'll do one clock and then we gotta call it done. Oh, the green looks beautiful. Love the green. Oh, what do you think? I don't know. They're all, I love them all. I think they're all amazing. I love them all. Every last one of them. I could do this for days and days and days, but I really can't. So let's move on and let's do a clock. And what color opulent paper do we want to use for the clock? Hmm, I want to use something dark. Dark, dark, dark. I want something dark. Hmm, I don't have dark, dark, dark. Hmm. <laughs> dark, dark, dark. Do I have something dark? Ooh, that's pretty. How about the blue? I use the blue. The blue would be pretty, right? Also part of the opulent, part of muted collection. Let's grab a clock. And remember, we have an option to do it two different ways. So if I want, I can start with this one. Even though this says three, if it makes my life easier, I can absolutely start there. Get some and tape it on down. One, two. Oh, let's make sure my orientation. Oh, yeah, there's my C. Whew. Three, actually, maybe I'll go this way. Three and four. And what color do we want the case? Do we want the case in gold or do we want the case in silver? Decisions, decisions. We'll do the case in gold. So let's grab our Versa mark. Think we're good? And I'm gonna put this one right on here and we'll do the other clock face with this one. So let's do, so you can really see the Versa mark on there, right? Let's do gold. And anywhere it's got that watermark wet look, my gold is going to hold. Ooh. Tap, tap, tap. I'm not so worried about the outside because I'm going to end up cutting that off. So 
So let's get this done. Heat set, because I am on, well, I'm on specialty paper and I'm using an embossing powder. Change it from that yucky brown to a fabulous polished gold. Looks like I've got everything. Let's grab, let's grab this one and we'll do this one in silver. So my numbers are going to stay blue and everything behind it is going to move to silver. So let's line it up, let's tape it on down. And I'm going to mask off that Happy Father's Day. Because I don't want any Versamark in there. And Versamark up. Okay, I'm gonna kind of move it around to make sure I got every place. Yeah, every place looks nice and wet. That's good, that's what I'm looking for. Pull it off. You can see, look at that. Oh, yay, yay, yay! <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> and away we go. <gasps> well, we're doing I can't believe I grabbed the gold. Stacy. I'm gonna add some silver to it anyway. I can't believe I just did this. All right, I was so excited. See, I got too happy with myself. <laughs> I'm gonna add some silver in anyway. Well, if I take that off and I add a little more gold in, I won't be able to push my, put my, my embossing powder back to, nope, I already mixed it. All right, well, it's a mishmash. Oh, I can't believe I did that. And I can't save my embossing powder. So don't do that. And heat set. Ugh. I'm gonna tell you. Kind of looks like it's vintagey. 
Like it's tarnished. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not overly mad at it. <laughs> and then I could go in and add my hands. And if I wanted my happy Father's Day. Okay. I'm not mad at it. But let's do the other side just so you can see the difference between the two. And let's hope I get it right this time. And this time we'll reverse it. We'll do this in silver. And the other in gold. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> All right, pull it up. Grab my silver. I was just, that's what you get for being too excited about what you did. I, I lost focus. <laughs> it just never gets old. All right, I'm going for it because time is of the essence. I have a live chat coming up. <laughs> kind of hard to say, sorry, I can't live chat with you. I'm, I'm filming, I'm taping Saturday's class. Okay, that is magic. I am sorry, but that is absolute polished silver magic. There is not a silver on the market or a gold on the market that looks like this. I don't need that, but... That is amazing. Don't know how they did it. Do not know how they did it. All right, I'm gonna take this one and we're gonna line it up. I'm dry, I'm dry. And some and this time it's going to be the opposite. This time my numbers are going to be what gets embossed and the background is going to stay blue. Okay, so let's hit it with our reverse. Oh, I want a mask. I don't want to use my, don't want my hands to come through. And you can definitely go back and emboss the hands. You could use black embossing powder over the top of all of this to get your, all, your little hands embossed where you want them. I'm looking at my watch going, yikes. All right, let's give it a whirl and see what we get. You can see gold, 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 gold. <laughs> Gold, gold, gold. Gold, gold, gold. All right. Put my embossing powder away. All 
Man, I still have a ton of embossing powder left. Ton. Lid, just because. And heat set. All right, let's trim it out and then we'll see the two of them together. So you can see what the difference is. Specialty paper, Sizzix Opulent. This is from the Muted Collection. All right. So we have one, or we have one. You get to choose which one you like better. You don't have to pick, you get, you don't have to decide, oh, I only want this one, I can only get this one, or oh, I like this one, I only can get this one. You get them both. You get to play with both of them because they both come in the set. And again, you can add your hands in there, you can add your Happy Father's Day, you decide. Okay, we have done oodles and I am super late but I love everything we did. I loved it all. I love the, the, the polished embossing powder is beautiful. Just inking looks great. You have oodles of things to play with, with these stencils. And you may already have stays on or archival or stays in place to play with. But that embossing powder, that embossing powder is brand new and that super fine is exclusive to us and it makes magic. Just inked, super cute. Inked versus embossed. All right, so we did a lot. What's on sale? Quickly, well, Versamark's gonna be on sale. Versamark, absolutely. The embossing powder will be sold as a duo. So you get the gold and the silver. We can't split them up yet, I don't have enough. So it'll be on sale as a set. The stencils, I didn't even get time to stamp. The stencils, open stock or both? They're $9.99 each, so you get them both. The stamp set, the stamp set. It's not about the pieces, but how they fit together, that matters. I did that one for the circle. See, it's not about the pieces. It's about how they fit together that matters. There's no time for regrets. You just got to know. You just got to keep on moving. Yes. Anything you can't control is teaching you how to let go. Will it be easy? Nope. Worth it? Absolutely. The harder the, uh, thing is to do, or the hard thing to do and the right thing to do are usually the same thing. So all the stamps from verses, you'll see them in all the sentiments. Yes, yes, yes. Um... I can't remember what else, but we'll put it, oh, the, the stays on. I'll put the stays on on sale. I think most of you already have a comparable ink, but we'll go ahead and do the middies on sale. I wanna say there's 12 colors. We'll do all 12 colors on sale. All right, samples, because this girl's got a rocket. Already showed you this one. Already showed you this one. Here, the harder thing to do and the right thing to do are usually the same thing, done in very girly colors. It's not about the pieces, but how they fit together. Look at how darling is this. Here, you did use two of them together. Using it, mm-hmm, isn't that beautiful? Will it be easy? Nope. Worth it? Absolutely. There's no time for regret. You just gotta keep moving forward. Mm, look at how beautiful is this.
No time for regret. You just got to keep moving forward. The, hard, the harder thing to do and the right thing to do are usually the same thing. And then over here. Happy Father's Day. You're so sweet. There's the background. And the balloon is made out of one of the dots. Isn't that cute? It's not about the pieces, but how they fit together. And look at how soft is this one. Michelle did these and she did a beautiful job. Anything you can't control is learning, is teaching you how to let go. This one was done with flakes. That was all done with flakes. Look at how pretty these are. And then last but not least. All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Holy smokes, artichokes. Gotta run downstairs and get ready for our Thursday live chat. By the time you're seeing this, I'll either be in Columbus, Ohio, or I'll be still here in sunny California. Who knows? Time will tell what I end up deciding to do. But if you like what you saw here, the stencils and the verses are exclusive to Scrapbooking Made Simple. They are. They're mine. I can't help that. The stays on, you can get it at an independent retailer. Absolutely. Or stays in place or, or archival. Yes. Uh, Versamark you can get at most of your independent retailers. Go get it from them first. Sure, yes, support them. The, the polished gold and silver, you may be able to find it in, not in super fine. Super fine, I am the only one who has it, but, and it's brand new to the market. So you may be able to find it elsewhere, I'm not sure. But always go introduce yourself to your local independent retailer. And if you don't have one, then find an online small independent shop like we are. There's lots of us out here that um, just, we just so appreciate all of you. All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking made simple, scrapbooking made simple. Looking at my watch going, I have a live chat in like 25 minutes. I'll see you there. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Next time I see you will be Monday for Make It Monday. Uh, Ultimate Crafts Part 2. Surprise. Bye, everybody.